So far, application functionality is working great. Our authentication is working. We are registering users, we're logging users in, and we're updating the parent application state. However, we have an issue where we need to let the application know that it needs to check if a user is authenticated or if they're not right away. So imagine a scenario where you'd go to Facebook, and every time you went to Facebook, you would get requested to type in your email address and password. That would be a horrible user experience, and we don't want that either. So let's create a new user so that we have somebody to work with here. So I'm going to register this user, and you can see everything's working. But if I hit refresh on the dashboard, it says we're not logged in. So what I want to do is I want to create a process for checking to see if the cookie is installed in the browser and asking the API if the user is authenticated or not. And so that's what we're gonna build out in this guide. So opening up Visual Studio Code here, I'm gonna to go to the app component because this is the parent component. This is where you need to check to see if a user is logged in or not so it can let all of the child components know about it. So I'm gonna create a function here called check login status. It's not gonna take in any arguments and it is going to contact Axios. And so make sure that you have Axios imported here at the top. So import Axios from Axios. And now we can actually call this. So I'll say axios.get and we're going to call the server. Now it's not HTTPS, I made that mistake in the last video. In this case, for localhost, it's just HTTP and then localhost colon 3001 slash logged in. Now if you do not remember this, we created a logged in endpoint in our Rails API. So we're just creating a get request where we're contacting that API and then we're passing in, and this is very important as the second argument, we're passing in an object with with credentials set to true. If you do not do that, none of this will work because Rails won't know about the cookie. With credentials is where you're giving permission for the API to be able to read that in. So we're going to say with credentials true and then from there we're going to take the response. So first let's just see if this is working. So I'm going to grab the response and let's just console log it. So I'll say logged in question mark and let's just see what the response gives us and then let's also add a catch in case there is a server error so i'll say error and then i'll console log out the check login error and then we want this function to run right whenever the components mounted. So I'm going to say component did mount. And then from there, this dot check login status, and we're gonna call that function. So let's open up Google Chrome, open up the actual console, because that's what we're printing out to. You'll see right when we logged in, it says logged in, and it says data logged in is true. So it says not logged in, if you're confused, why is it saying not logged in? Well, it's because this is pulling from our base state. Our base state is not connected to the API yet, at least not when the system is actually working or not when the system is loading up. So right here, we can see the API is actually telling us about the user. This is the user we just created. That's the right email address and it's telling us we're logged in. So everything is working. We now just need to connect all of the dots. We need to take in this API call so that every time the components mounted, which means whenever the application loads, it's gonna check to see, is the user logged in? If they are, let them have whatever permissions or processes or whatever it is that you want to give them. So 
that is really good that everything's working. Now we need to just wire it up. So inside of this then response, I'm going to have a conditional. So I'm going to say if response dot data dot logged in, which is what we saw, that's what gets returned. So if that's true, because we saw those a Boolean and this dot state dot logged in status is not logged in. In that case, what I'd like to do is to set state. So I'll say this dot set state and we'll set the logged in status equal to logged in. And if you want, you could also grab that user as well. So you can say, I also want to set the user and that'll be response.data.user. Okay, so that's the case in this scenario here. This is where response data is logged in and the current state is not logged in. So that's kind of our case number one, as it were. Now, else if, so now we have another condition. So now we're going to say if the response.data.logged in is false. I put a bang there. So this is just going to check to see, is this false? If that's the case and this dot state dot logged in status is set to logged in, then we want to turn that off. So in other words, if for some reason you have this scenario where you have the user as being logged in and you have that in your local state, but the API tells you, no, this user is not authenticated, then you want to perform another state update. So let's just paste in this dot set state and we're going to change this to not logged in, which I believe that is, yes, that is our current state. And then we don't have a user here. So in this case, we'll just set the user back to a plain empty object. So that is the second condition. And that's really all that we have to be concerned about. So we're checking to see if the user is logged in and if the API returns and says, yes, they are logged in, but the system says that they're not, then we want to update that. And if it's saying that the API says, no, they're not logged in, but our local state says they are, we want to update that. We don't have to take care of any other conditions because if you think about the other potential scenarios, they are the user or the API actually being logged in and it's saying in our local state we're logged in. In that case, we don't have anything else that we need to do. So that is all that has to be done. So let's test this out now. And you can see right away, just when we hit save, the state is now automatically updated. And if you go to the home page, which is mimicking what would happen, because if you hit refresh, this is as if a user is coming to this page when they are authenticated, but say they come back the next day or anything, it's going to pick up that they are logged in. So this is working perfectly. So now that we have our registration component done, our login component done, and we have the ability to automatically check when our application loads, if a user is logged in or not, we have our full authentication system built out. In the next guide, we're going to perform our final task, and that is we're going to implement the ability to sign users out.